a multi-billion dollar investment for the world's first grid-scale commercial fusion power plant has been announced in Virginia. Join us now with the details. Bob Mumgard is the CEO of Commonwealth Fusion Systems in Virginia. Uh, Governor Glenn Youngkin, uh, good to have both of you uh, gentlemen on. Um, Governor and, uh, and uh, Mr. Mumgard, can you, for those uh, of us, and, you know, of course I understand all the technology of, of how this works, uh, Bob, but c can you detail exactly what we're talking about here, that, that uh, the technology used to generate this power, grid-level power? Yeah, so fusion energy is the energy source of the stars. It's the uh, opposite of, of nuclear power. In fusion, what we're doing is taking light elements and we're combining them together and producing huge amounts of heat. And uh, that's a, an energy source that hasn't yet been harnessed on Earth. But if and when we do that, uh, we'll have power plants that basically don't use any fuel and that can't melt down. They're power plants that take energy from a natural resource of you know, digging up and consuming or, or waiting for, for the sun to shine or wind to blow and turn that into a machine, a machine that's a technology that that will sit there and, and make power clean, abundant, 24 hours a day, and anywhere in the world, and won't ever run out. And that's like why fusion is seen as this holy grail. And there's a, a race around the world right now to develop this technology. And my company is uh, the leader of that race. And what we announced yesterday is that the first commercial grid-scale power plant, uh, something that we've been designing for several years, will be built in Virginia. So it's ready. And what, what's the feed stock? I mean, you don't need... You don't need radioisotopes. You don't, you're not splitting the atom. You're, you're actually fusing atoms. So what's the feedstock, Bob? So, yeah, so instead of using uranium or plutonium and, and splitting it and having long-lived nuclear waste, the feedstock here is the lightest elements. It's elements that are found in seawater and, and some lithium, uh, but it's, it's tiny amounts. So, you know, the, the, the water that's in a, a glass of water is enough fuel for any one person's entire lifetime of energy use. And so that makes this effectively limitless. How do you get, uh, Governor, what, what's your involvement uh, with, in the state of Virginia? Well, first I wanna thank Bob and uh, Commonwealth Fusion Systems for choosing Virginia, uh, because we've been a state that I think has been leading in all of the above, all American energy and power plans. And boy, let me tell you, this is all American and uh, this is innovation and breakthrough technology at its best. And I was so pleased that we had a chance to, to bring uh, this uh, breakthrough technology to Virginia. It's a 400 megawatt power station. Uh, it will fuel the power of the future uh, in, uh, in data centers and AI and advanced manufacturing and all of the investments that's going on in Virginia today. And uh, Virginia's roaring, and so I'm very excited about the fact that we will see this power plant come on board uh, in early 2030s and add just this breakthrough capability to the future of powering not just Virginia, but I think America. Bob, how do you measure um, cost per, per gig? I mean, whatever metric you use, how does it compare to conventional uh, energy used to power the grid right now? How does it compare to, uh, to renewable energy and solar and, wind and everything else? Is it, uh, and will it get cheaper as the technology? And I guess you're not doing cold fusion. F uh, what was their name? Uh, Pons and Fleischmann? That, that doesn't work, does it? Too no, bad. That doesn't work. We're, we're, doing the, we're doing the fusion that is the, the hot that fusion. That works. You know, really hot, hundreds of millions of degrees. Yes, it's, it's done in, in universities and, and laboratories around the world, and, and we have a facility up, spin out of MIT up in Massachusetts that's uh, building the prototype for the facility that we'll then later build in, in Virginia. And in terms of cost, you know, fusion's about building a machine. It's not about uh, consuming resources. So it comes down to how well you can build that machine. And that's one of the reasons that we're building a prototype right now is to actually get the receipts of that cost. And when we add it all up, it looks like this could be very competitive. And it also could benefit from the advanced manufacturing, um, for the, the big macro trends of compute, um, supercomputers, et cetera, that are affecting all of uh, innovation in our, our economy. And so that could really drive down the cost of fusion. But really importantly as well, you know, fusion is an energy source that we control. So we can turn it on and we can turn it off. So that's very different than renewables, where one of the big challenges is, you know, they're intermittent. That the sun's not out, you don't have power. With fusion, Bob, it can't, you it can't uh, China syndrome either, right? I mean, it's not, is it, you know, what, what, with the nuclear power industry, you know the, the 
the stigma is lifting a little bit, but it's not it's not dangerous or, or as dangerous potentially. Some people say nuclear power is the safest thing around, and it probably is. But there there is sort of that overhang of 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 concern. And with fusion, it's the opposite reaction. So it's completely right. different than, than nuclear power. It still could be dangerous, right? Has, uh, yeah, but it means that at any given time, you, you actually uh, can turn off the machine instantaneously. Okay. So like a single breath of air can turn the machine off, which uh, is the ultimate safety break.